Hello everyone, how's it going? Hoppy Struo here. Welcome back to my short tutorial series about sharding using Moonscraper. And if you can tell, this fifth part is being recorded way after all the other parts. And that's because of the recent developments with Clone Hero. If you somehow don't know, Clone Hero is a Guitar Hero clone, obviously. But it has quickly become everyone's choice for rhythm gaming. And though while it's still an early alpha, in a lot of respect it's way better than any of the other Guitar Hero clones that we've seen to date. And everyone's kind of hyped up about it. And so that brings us to this fifth part of the tutorial series, which will be all about the Moose Scraper specific features that have been added that are essentially for Clone Hero. So to start off, let's talk about formatting for Clone Hero. It's really, honestly, the simplest thing ever. All you have to do is name your chart file, whether it be a chart file or a .mid file, name it notes, the actual file, and then name your audio, whether it be an MP3 or an OGG, both will work, name it song. That should be all you have to do. Next thing I will talk about, doesn't really have a lot to explain, but Moonscraper now has drum charting. It works essentially like feedback drum charting did. It doesn't have the pro options currently. So if you'd like to add the pro symbols that Rock Band had, you will still need to use something like EOF to add those. But for the basic use, you can use Moonscraper to chart drums. And I'm gonna quickly swap over to the default theme. So I'm switching to the default theme for Moonscraper for one specific reason. And it is that the order of the colors of the notes change. And that is intentional, that's how drum charting is, and so Moonscraper changes it accordingly. And a final note about drum charting, obviously there's five lanes, but as you may well know, Rock Band only has four lanes. So what do you do? You just use these four lanes. You just ignore the fifth lane right here. You import it into something like EOF. EOF will recognize it as a four lane drum chart. I personally recommend four lane with the pro options, but obviously you can do whatever you want. So moving on from drums, we'll talk about events. You may have noticed there is now an eighth icon in the tools box, it's the events icon. You may or may not be aware, but there are these things called events for chart files. So if you place one just like you place anything else in Moonscraper, you can look at the list of things you can control. No one does any of these. Typically people will just chart the chart and ignore all of this crowd stuff, the lighting, no one usually cares if you have this. The two things that are very important though for Clone Hero our solo and this GHL event. Let's we'll start with solo. It's exactly what you think, the rock band solo feature. You place the solo where you want to start, you place the solo end when you want it to end. That's all you gotta do. And then with the GHL6 event, this is so that you can chart for Guitar Hero Live at the time of recording this. This is just how Firefox is doing it. It might change, it might not, we'll see. But it's essentially so you can have that sixth note, technically seventh note for GH Live because Clone Hero supports GH Live. And the last main difference between Guitar Hero charting and Clone Hero charting is all this metadata matters now. Firefox added the album line so that you can add the album metadata. So all of that is now important for charting. I highly recommend that you use all of it. And if we go into our files, these should be all of the files you need for Clone Hero. You can add the album art the album art should be named album, the chart should be named notes, and the audio should be named song, or if you have stems, they should be named appropriately, and those appropriate names are listed in the clone here readme. And if you happen to be using a mid file for some reason, you'll need this .ini file, which just adds the metadata separately. You can literally just copy one from any other chart that you find that has it, and just delete all of the info and just ray it yourself. But so that is all. These are very straightforward concepts, obviously, like most of the things for charting are. It's just a matter of knowing that they exist and then doing them. So thank you for watching. I can't wait to see your guys' charts. Can't wait to see how you guys push this community even farther than it already has come. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.